In this question, we have a reference to a distance, 80 miles between two cities. We have a reference to a speed or rate, wind blowing at a constant 30 miles per hour during a whole trip. And we're also looking for a speed of a plane. Finally, we've got a time mentioned, a uh, total trip time where we're going from one city above the other and then straight back that total being 1.4 hours so we should be thinking about the uniform motion formula or as it used to be called the distance formula although there is a, another formula that uh, is also called the distance formula and that's why uniform motion is what we're starting to call that these days we have rate times time equals distance we have our trip from city A to B and then back from B to A I can set up the table here with the formula as the headers for the columns while which portion of the trip is making up the rows in both cases we have the same distance of 80 the time we have the total of 1.4 we don't have what the time was individually for the two parts so I'm going to leave that blank for the moment and we are looking for the rate of the plane in still air so I'm going to give that a name label it as X from A to B was with the wind so what you have is the wind going in the same blowing in the same direction as the flight of the plane so it's speeding up the plane it's going to add 30 miles per hour although it doesn't say it explicitly you also have the wind still blowing in that same direction from city A to city B fighting against the plane, slowing it down, switching that operation to subtraction when going back from city A, uh, from, from city B to city A. Last two things to set up the equation are going to be that we could rewrite the formula, divide both sides by R to get time equals distance over rate and so the trip out we have a time of 80 over x plus 30 and the trip back we've got a time of 80 over x minus 30 all of x minus 30 well how's that going to help us we still haven't used the 1.4 hours but that's a total of the times so there's the time from A to B plus the time from B back to A equaling the total trip time it's a round trip That's where the 1.4 hours is going to go, and we'll be filling in on this side the expressions we just worked out using the table. <clears throat> so we're going to have 80 over x plus 30 plus 80 over x minus 30. 
equaling a total of one point four hours. We can get a least common denominator here. Bigger than one point four is over one, and so that's not going to influence anything. I'm going to multiply both sides by the product of these two denominators because <clears throat> there's no factoring we can do and so we're not going to get some quote smaller least common denominator. concern ourselves with distributing before we cancel. So we'll have the x plus 30 times x minus 30 multiplied to both. 80 over x plus 30 and to the 80 over all of x minus 30 it's going to equal the right hand side that I had previously which I'll get back to in a moment I need some more space Cancellation, 80 times x minus 30. Cancellation over here, x minus 30 is canceled. And so I've got 80 times x plus 30. And that equals, I'll put the 1.4 in front. Sorry if that wasn't a little easier to read earlier. And we could multiply this out or use the difference of squares, then distribute the 1.4. There's some distribution to do over here as well. But I'm going to save a little space and factor out 80. the difference of squares formula. We're going to have x squared minus 900 coming up. The reason I factored here, we did have 80 as a common factor. Look at what happens to the 30s. 1x plus 1x will give us 2x. So that's 80 times the quantity 2x. We've got 1.4 equals x squared minus 900 on the right. As soon as that x squared came up, that's when I knew, oh, this was an application that was going to involve a quadratic equation. Up until that point, I didn't see anything in the formula that was suggesting something quadratic. So 80 times 2 is 160. We've got 160x. Over here, we've got 1.4x squared minus, I'm thinking, 1360. But I need a moment to check that. 1.4 times 900. Darn it, 1260. And I'm going to subtract that 
160 to the other side and get this in standard form. Given that I do not have a one point, uh, I don't have a one as my coefficient for x squared, and getting it would not be nice. It's not going to divide into 160 nicely. All right, that's 1260. I don't even know about uh, this one, but dividing this by 1.4, we're not going to get some nice number. So I don't want to go with trying to factor it. I don't want to go with completing the square. I don't want to try the square root property since x is in two places, not one. So I'm going with a quadratic formula. A is 1.4, B is negative 160, and C is negative 1260. So plugging those into the formula. B being negative 160, negative B is going to be positive 160. I'm still plugging in a negative 160 here, but after we square it, it's going to be positive anyway. 2 times 1.4, that's 2.8. Uh, with negative 160 squared minus 4 times 1.4 times negative 1260 160 or negative 160 squared it's going to give us 25,600 got two minus signs here, so we're going to wind up adding a positive number, same as subtracting a negative. So 4 times 1.4 is 5.6, and multiplying that by 1260, we've got 7,056 that's being added to the 25,600 which is giving us 32,656 under the square root I'm hoping that we have a perfect square, but maybe we don't. We don't. It's going to give us 180.709712. And looking back at the directions, it was calling for rounding the speed of the plane to the nearest whole number. So we're going to round our answer for x to the nearest positive integer. So that's going to come up at the very end. plus or minus 180.709712 all over 2.8
we do the subtraction got the negative 20.709 71197 but we're dividing that by a positive 2.8 so even if we rounded to an integer we'd be getting a speed of about negative 7 and we'd be talking about that in miles per hour that makes no sense that would mean that the plane flying so slow that the wind is always working against it instead of headed towards city B it would be moving away from city B that whole time so I'm gonna have to reject that and take the addition case which would give us 340.70 blah 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 do any of my rounding till the very end the sooner you start rounding different people rounding to different places we could get all sorts of possible answers and we don't want that so dividing the 340.709712 by 2.8 I'm coming up with 121.68204 which to the nearest mile per hour would be 122 and we do need that label of 122 miles per hour and if you think about it we've got passenger jets that go 350 500 miles per hour and military jets going beyond that so for a single engine private airplane doing a little over 100 miles per hour that kind of makes sense plus as a check here it's not going to match up exactly because of the rounding but that meant that going with the um, wind from city A to city B, that's how much time would be spent. Because I'm adding, oops, add the 30. That's almost 160. So that's almost one half. Since we're dividing by something smaller, that's going to be a little bit bigger than one half of an hour. Since the total trip time was 1.4, that's close to 1.5, I figure this is going to be close to 1. So when we subtract the 30, it's going to be 80 over 92. And since we're dividing 80 by something that's closer to 92, that makes sense that that's closer to 1. I would do the division first. If you have a calculator that does not know the order of operations. And then add those two things. I'm getting approximately, after both divisions, followed by the adding, 1.39588. One oh oh seven. That would be the hours. That is pretty close to one point four. So that's giving me some confidence that I've done this correctly.